Hey, I'm Steve Gabriel, and I'm thrilled that we have this time together. I pray that God would help you to understand how great He is and how great His plan is for your life. Come on, let's enjoy God together. I am aware that in a church of our size, there can be times when all of us question our significance. We can question the part that we play. We can question even whether we're making a difference. We can question even whether we fit in church or even in life, whether we fit in general. And we don't need to go through our Instagram and read any more posts about people taking their own life people committing suicide, people that are well-known that seem to have found their place in life, but clearly inside have not found their place in life, have not found their fit. And so I wanna take the moments that I have with you to talk about three aspects to help you understand how significant you are and how much you are necessary. And I kind of put a title over this called The Puzzle. The Puzzle. Colossians 1 26 to 29 in the Passion Translation, which is one of my new favorite translations, begins to explain that we have this journey that we're all on, and really it's a mystery. You know, there's a lot about Christianity and a lot about how God works that is a mystery. I mean, it's a mystery to us how the power of God resides inside of us. It's a mystery to us how the awesomeness of God in heaven would be involved in the detail and the smallness of humanity. It's a mystery to us how the healer can be in us and work through us, how the deliverer can deliver us and use us to deliver others. It's a mystery. There's so much about what we do and how we serve God that, that we can explain, but there's so much more we can't explain because it's a divine mystery. It's a puzzle. And I don't want you in the puzzle and in the mystery to not think that you have a part to play. And Colossians 1 verse 26 to 29 says, there is a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has been concealed from the world for generations, but now it's been revealed, unfolded and manifested for every holy believer to experience. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ is embedded within us. He's become a heavenly treasure of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people and God wants everyone to know it. He doesn't want one of us to be outside of being involved in this great mystery of how he works. And this is really where I come from today. Christ is our message. And so the reason I'm preaching today is to awaken hearts and bring every person into a fuller understanding of truth. It has become my inspiration and passion in ministry to labor with tireless intensity, with his power flowing through me, to present to every believer the revelation of being his perfect one in Jesus Christ. Today I pray that maybe in some way your heart would be awakened, that purpose would come alive, that revelation would happen, that you would have a greater understanding of the part you play in this great mystery, in this great puzzle of the house of God, the kingdom of God, and being a child of God. And so I'm gonna use the puzzle analogy because I live in a home with a puzzle addict. She said she did not mind me letting people know of her addiction because it's kind of geeky, but she's proud to say that she is a jigsaw loving girl. Hope loves jigsaws. She lives for jigsaws. Her treat is when we order her online a new jigsaw. She doesn't have devices. She's not on an iPad. She loves jigsaws. And so she even has a jigsaw holder. That's how geeky she is. And so she's a proud jigsaw geek. And so I want watch my daughter do jigsaws, often she'll lay it out on the table and she'll get the box. And if you've ever done a jigsaw, you know what I'm talking about. And as I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you, the imagery of what I've watched my daughter do week in, week out came to mind. And today I want to remind you in this great jigsaw, in this great puzzle called the church, called the kingdom of God, I want to remind you that you are a piece, that you have a place and that you are part of the big picture, that you have a peace, that you have a place, and you are part of the big picture. So let me deal with the first of those three Ps at the beginning, the peace. I need you to know today that you fit. I need you to know today that you are a peace that is necessary. In this jigsaw that I have here on this table, there is not one piece inside of this box 
that is unnecessary. Every single piece inside this box is going to be needed at some point. Every single piece inside of this box is going to be necessary to complete the image that the designer had in mind and the designer God himself has put together, as it were, a box lid of what his church, of what his people, of what his kingdom will look like and not one piece is unnecessary. There's not one person he created that he went, ah, they're a spare one. There's not one person he created went, well, their piece really doesn't fit in the grand scheme of my box lid. No, every piece matters. And I really feel to go on a bit of a mission this morning to actually grab a hold of you individually, if I could, and say, do you understand that you are a piece in God's great puzzle? And do you understand that therefore you have a place and therefore you have a part to play? Because one of the biggest things that the enemy does is he tries to tell you you, you are unnecessary. You are not needed. Your, your presence isn't felt. Your contribution makes no difference. It's so small, it's laughable. And I began by reading testimonies of what has happened in people's lives because different pieces all played their part. Not because one piece, not one of them mentioned the worship team or the band or a particular message. It was the atmosphere created. It was the service that was given. It was the prayers that went up. And every single one of us has to come to a new revelation, me included, that our peace matters. Because there are seasons in life when you can just feel like no one even knows I exist. There are seasons in life where you feel like I don't even, I don't even have time to even think about whether my peace matters. But every single one, as insignificant as this looks, and it does, as insignificant as this looks, it has a huge part to play. How many of you have ever done a puzzle and there's some pieces missing? And how many of you know it's really annoying? Because until you find those pieces, it cannot be a complete picture. And I don't know whether you get that the master the creator of heaven and earth is looking at the box lid and you're all the pieces. And I don't know if you don't realize how much he wants you to come and take your place because he knows when you don't, there's something missing, there's something you, you're given, there's something unique about you that is necessary. John 15, 16 to 14 to 16 says this. It says, I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy will be your joy. To love one another, to put your life on the line for your friends. Because listen to this, you are my friends. When you do the things I command you, I'm no longer calling you a servant because servants don't know what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. Even that, if you went home with just that today, should blow your mind. That the one who is overall calls you friend and chooses to tell you the great plan, chooses to leave you all the wisdom and chooses to expound on all the truth. But this is the line I need you to get today, some of you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. <laughs> you didn't choose me. I know you think when you put your hand up in a meeting one day and said, I want Jesus, that you chose me. Well, good on you. That's good. But I need you to know before you ever did that, I chose you. I made you a piece. I had a box lid of which you were in. You, you were already chosen. And some of you really are struggling with what I'm saying right now because nothing about your life makes you feel chosen. I don't know what your experience was at school, but my experience at school when it came to sports afternoon was never joyful. I hated PE. I actually will confess, children, my children, close your ears, but I actually forged notes on a regular basis. Don't even think about it, Hope and Noah. <laughs> Learn from your mother's sin. It's not a, a, a license to sin. I used to forge, try and look like my mum's handwriting notes to get out of PE all the time. She has a cramp, she has a bad knee, liar, liar, pants on fire, like anything, because the humiliation, 
that was coming my way when it came to PE, I knew full well because they would always separate everyone out and then they would pick the two people that were the smartest, fastest, muscliest, and they'd say, you can pick a team and you can pick a team. Anyone know my pain? You know what's coming next, right? And so they're like, I'll have her and I'll have them and I'll have her. And I'm just stood there like, yep, here we go again. And everybody's picked and then there's Billy No Mates left. And then the other teams will look at each other and go, oh, I guess you're stuck with her this time. And like, they would not even hide it. They would say that out loud. And I just knew like, I am not chosen. No one wants me on their team. I am not chosen on this sports team. I have clearly nothing to give. And they would always say to me at that point, what we need you to do is go way out back, like, like further further, like basically where the ball would never come. So I wouldn't even contemplate running for it, trying to catch it, just go as far. So I just was like, fine. Then because I'm not chosen, I will act unchosen. And I would lay on the field and I would sunbathe for the afternoon. I would just be like, you know, I know you think I'm useless, so I'm going to act like I'm useless. And I tell you that story because some of you think that to be chosen, someone has to say, oh, you, I need you here. And you, I need you here. And you, I see so much greatness on you. I need you here. But it's not how it works. You're already chosen. And you either live as a chosen piece or you live as someone waiting to be chosen. And the difference is huge because when you live as chosen, you decide things differently. You, you confess things differently. You walk around differently. You contribute voluntarily because you're like, I'm chosen. Why wouldn't you want me to be around? Why wouldn't you want me on your team? David, technically by his own family, wasn't chosen. He wasn't even invited to the party where the anointing was gonna happen of the next person that God would choose to anoint. His dad didn't even think he was worth inviting off a hillside. He was stuck up on a hill in the middle of nowhere where no one could see him, but God saw him because God had already chosen him. And it doesn't matter if you didn't get an invite to the party. Hello? Doesn't matter if you weren't on the list of the people that got applauded or mentioned. Doesn't matter if the boss didn't invite you into the group. It doesn't matter if at work you didn't get asked to do the thing that other people got asked to do. You have to remind yourself, I am chosen. I am a piece. I have a part to play. And whether or not they can see that and whether or not I can see it right now, I choose to believe it. And so when David was on the hill, Samuel says, to his father in 1 Samuel 16, is this it? Are there no more sons? And listen to what his dad calls him. Well, yes, there's the runt. There's the one that we didn't even think was worth picking. There's the piece that doesn't really seem to go. There's the one that doesn't look like the other pieces because the other pieces, they look strong and they look like they had muscle and they would have got picked for the sports team. But this runt that's on a hill, why would I even invite him to come to this meeting? Because clearly he's not gonna be picked. But you know what? God specializes in runts. <laughs> he's chosen you. You are a piece. And you must settle that you are a piece in God's great puzzle. You must settle it before an enemy lies to you about it, tells you your life's not worth it, tells you to self-harm or to skip out or to disappear or to do something crazy, tells you to just go down the bar and drink away your sorrows because no one wants you and you're not welcome and you don't fit. It's an absolute lie of the enemy. It violates the Word of God. You are a piece. You're a piece. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're a piece. You're a piece of awesomeness. You're handcrafted. Now, if I hold this piece up, it's kind of odd. It's got like a lump out of it and a bump on it and an edge here. And it's kind of weird looking. That's okay. We don't all look the same because God's not doing one thing. And when you go to a church and everything is the same and everybody looks like Stepford wives, we're in trouble because that's not how God designed the box lid to look. We are all different pieces. But in order for us to get to the next thing, we have to agree I'm a piece. I'm a, be a piece. I, I'm going to settle it. I fit. I fit. 
I'm going to settle it. I might look different. I might have lumps and bumps, but I fit. I might have a terrible past. I might have done stuff wrong, but God chose me. He chose me. He chose me. I fit. I fit. And when you know that you fit, you get up out of bed and you show up and you look up and you confess different. I fit needs to be a revelation. You, if you are here today, you need to hear the word of God to you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. And I chose you because you fit. Once you accept that you're a piece, then you can begin to accept you have a place. You have a place. Every piece in this box has a place in the big picture. Every piece goes somewhere. And here's what I need you to know, that you have a place, but you have to find it. (laughs) I have never once watched my daughter do a jigsaw and she's taken the box lid off and Literally, within a few seconds, the box lid is off and she just picks a random piece up and she just goes, oh, yeah, that goes there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that goes there. Yeah, that goes there. Never once. What I have seen her do is spend a long time trying to put pieces in different places and they don't quite fit. Now, doesn't mean they don't fit because we just established that. Just means they're in the wrong place. And if you don't understand this, you will, you will check out on God. You will check out on the church. You will check out in areas of life because you're like, well, okay, yeah, I'm a piece, but I don't fit. Because I tried. And the just, it wasn't like a connect. I just didn't feel like I fit right. I just felt like I was a little out of shape. Yeah, welcome to the journey called finding your place. It doesn't happen overnight. You can't just pick a piece out and expect the next day for it to perfectly fit on all sides. It's a trial and error. That's why the Bible teaches us about coming to the house of God and about finding our fit because it doesn't happen overnight. I'm still finding my fit. I am. I think maybe one part's connected, right? But this part, I'm not sure yet because it takes a journey. And some of us are so impatient And we want all the pieces to fit now. We want all the places to be right now. Now, some of us get confused because there's some pieces that fit quicker than others, right? They're the edges. (laughs) And we all want to be an edge because the edge gets picked out of the box first because at least I know there's flat, there's flat. So I only have to fix you here and here. So edges are easier. You know, the worship leader that clearly has an anointing on their life. Yeah, you're an edge. I know where you go. You're easy. Go to the worship rehearsal. You know, the person that comes through and they're just really gifted in an area like it's as clear as day. But for most of us, we're not edges. The edges are the minimum in the box. All the others look really similar to one another. And therefore you can think you've found your place, but then you can feel after a little while, I'm not sure I fit here anymore. That doesn't mean you don't fit in the box lid. It just means you might need to move your place inside the puzzle. That's why in this church, we say to you, don't just come on Sunday. Get in a life group. Why? Because it helps you find your place. You bump into people and you share life with people and you begin to go, I I felt a little lost in the big service on Sunday, but on Tuesday or on Wednesday when I connected with that person, I sensed that I'm beginning to fit. Yeah, you're finding a place. That's why we say go to growth track because we're trying to help you find a place. That's why we say serve. Well, I served in kids' church and I hated it. Awesome. You served in kids' church and you found that wasn't your place. But whilst you were trying, you were learning things about where your place is. Well, I went in the bookshop team and it was a dream. Everybody's quiet and people just want to read. And it's not like kids' church. Exactly. Maybe you belong over here. You're a piece of the babbling brook, not the noisy crowd. That's okay. Your piece fits somewhere, but it will take time to find your place. David, I'm a shepherd. Mm. Uh, I'm a giant killer. Oh, uh, I'm a. I, I'm not liked by Saul. Oh, I, 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 I'm leading an army. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm a king. The peace took a while to find its place. So be patient with you, and be patient with the people around you, and. Have grace to find the place. Have grace 
to find the place. And don't come and say, I don't fit. I just don't fit. You're not allowed to say that. Wrong. Uh -uh. You do fit. But maybe you've not found the place where you fit right, yet, right now. That's okay. 1 Corinthians 12 is your homework. You need to go away and read it. What an incredible scripture it is. I'll read a snippet from it. What I want to talk about now is the various ways God's spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how when you didn't know God, you were led from one phony thing to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everybody else did it? Hello. It's different in this life. Listen to this. God wants you to use our intelligence and to seek to understand as well as we can. In other words, God wants you to take the time to work this thing out. To get smart, to figure it out. You know, Matthew Walker has been in our church over 30 plus years. And he's done everything, served in every area, all different areas. But it wasn't until a few years ago that something snapped into place. When his gift in finance became a gift to the house here. And his gift in leading a team that way became a gift to the house here. And he didn't give up his job. He's found his place in his work environment. But it was sometimes it's easier to find your place in the work environment than it is in the church. Because you're like, well, I do that for a job, but nobody needs a farmer in the church. Or I do that for a job, but no one needs a checkout assistant in the church. And so we understand it in the world because we try different jobs until we find our place. But then we struggle in the church. But you just have to have the same grace. To go, I think I have a gift of encouragement. I'm not sure where that belongs yet, but I'll find it. And it goes on to say, we each used to independently call our own shots. <laughs> but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. I'm going to ask the team to come up. And then it says this, I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant. Because some of you think that you're a big shot out there, but in here, you're a small fry. But I want you to think about how this makes you more significant, not less. Because a body isn't a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. Verse 19, but I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance, I love this, from being blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. And you must never forget this. Only as you accept your piece, your part of that body, does your piece mean anything. You're familiar with some parts that God has formed in His church, which is the body. And it begins to list those that are more obvious. But there is a part for all of us to fill, a place for all of us. And that scripture, many of us are familiar with, but the living out of it, I think we forget. I don't wanna to say to any of you who feel displaced, out of place, upset, I don't know. At any given time, there can be people in the room that feel like I am so connected, I am so clear. And others that are like, I'm confused. You know, I've heard teaching or people going around going, well, you know, you can just be a, a, a part of any church. You can go here, you can go there, you can shake it all about. No, then you're a floating jigsaw piece. And a floating jigsaw piece makes no sense. You have to put your piece in the puzzle. Even if at that time, it feels like it's not an exact fit. Have a grace to find your place. Have a grace to find your place. Finally, don't lose sight of the big picture. Never lose sight of the big picture. The beautiful thing about the church is that it's always growing. It's always increasing. There are always new pieces that are adding. There are always new parts that are forming. There's a big picture that we are part of. Never allow yourself to think, well, what difference do I make? You are part of something far greater than what we often see. We're part of a lineage, a box picture that started way back when. 
And now it's our turn to put our pieces in the box lid. And I don't want in our turn, on our time, for pieces to be left on the ground or missing or dismiss themselves. I want us all to know that there's a grace for us to find our place in this mystery of God. Psalm 18 verse 20, God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before Him. When I got my act together, He gave me a fresh start. And now I'm alert to God's ways. I don't take God for granted. Every day I review the way He works and I try not to miss a trick. I feel put back together and I'm watching my step because God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart to His eyes. And today, I want to remind you that you have a peace, you fit, you're chosen that you have a place, so just settle it and go on a journey of the grace to find it. And let's have grace with one another to find it. And don't forget, you're part of a much bigger picture. And if your peace is missing, there is significance that is missing. Hey, thank you so much for watching. As we finish our time together, we pray that He has impacted your heart. God is with you, so go on, have a great week ahead.